So CRKT has been impressing me lately. However, I felt like I was on the verge of writing them off. But recently, they've been pushing their way back through the pack, dropping heat. Today, we are checking out two new CRKT models that are made right here in the USA. Let's check it out. So we're first gonna start off with the Michaka. At least that's how Google told me to pronounce it. Michaka. 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 Ah. CRKT Machaka. And we're gonna check out this little sheet really quick because these are made by Hogue. Both the knives in this video are going to be made by Hogue, which is really awesome. We all know them as a, a great USA made company and we are and they are running MagnaCut Steel. Now I asked them the HRC, but I think they might've been mistaken. So when I asked them, they said 61 to 63. However, from my knowledge, Hogue is running their MagnaCut 62 to 64. So, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to guess it's that because, you know, it's their heat treat and that's what they've been doing on all their other stuff. So 62 to 64, I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. You know, I prefer it in the 63 plus range, you know, because that's where, you know, we're going to see the most out of that steel for a folding pocket knife. But let's talk about this one. So we have a beautiful drop point blade with a flat grind. It is it's not a thick blade, it's about 125 thousandths thick, but the blade's edge is a little bit more on the robust side. Now that might be a plus or a negative for you, but I measured it between uh, about 24 and 28 thousandths, just depending on where you measured it at. And a lot of people are gonna say, well, that's kind of thick, but it does slice very well, which we're gonna get to. They did put a decent angled um, angle on the edge, which definitely increases its ability to bite into materials and follow through with slicing. The handle material, G10, and you see we have this little band going around of natural G10. It looks kind of cool, it almost looks blue. Uh, really good finishing work on the G10. Now, how does this thing open? That's probably the biggest question. How is this thing even opening? Because there's no flipper tab, no thumb stud, you can't pry it open. So it is the scales. But instead of going like this with the scales where you push this scale forward and this scale back, you actually do it at the bottom where you're pushing this scale forward and holding on to this scale. So basically I like to use my palm right here and I just squeeze and you can see it popping forward right there. So that's how you open it, you just pop it forward and then that's also how you disengage it. Now, at first you're probably gonna want to do it two-handed, which is you know probably easier at first. But once you get used to it, you can palm it. And like I said, use your palm to push the back end, crank it open and use the same way to close it. I find it very easy to actually engage and disengage one hand once you get used to it. I didn't find it very easy right at first, but I quickly caught on. And as far as the spring tension, this thing hits hard. Smacks out there really good. And then when you close it, you can hear that. You really hear the, the engagement of the blade locking in place. You can push it in a little bit, but you get no out. So it doesn't have like what you would call detent lash, even though it's not a detent. So I guess that doesn't make sense. But I love the sound of it when it does close. You really feel that that click, that engage. And you can even hear a little ting. But yeah, this thing has a nice strong spring, a very reliable spring. And if I hold it down here, you can actually see the recoil. Nice strong spring, very reliable, like I said. So very happy with the automatic action. All right, let's check out the cutting performance through really thick double walled cardboard. Very ergonomic, very comfortable in the hand. And even for a thick edge, it uh, it's cutting very, very well. I'm glad they put a decent edge angle on that. That definitely helps out a lot. I can choke up really nice and tight to, to that edge. So it allows me to get a ton of leverage. And it also helps me trap it and keep it in this area. Oh, got hung up there. I'm 
And then if I want to choke back right here, that also works well. Obviously not gonna get as much leverage, but for just regular cutting when it's not super dense, very easy, very ergonomic. That definitely works out very well. Let's check out the utility cuts. The tip is nice and low. It's a little bit higher than the center of the pivot, but it's still in that perfect spot where you can easily do great utility cuts. Yeah, really nice. And this is gonna be like a primary way people, you know, open things up, you know, whether it's boxes or whatever, you know, using the tip. Now, the twisted sisal rope. Oh yeah, that works actually pretty good. So it's thick enough where you can get, you know, a good leverage point pushing down into the rope. A little bit thin on the spine, so it's not the most comfortable to push down on, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know, you could also go probably with your thumb like this. Not as efficient, but just to push straight down like that works very well. Nice and comfortable. I wouldn't want to do it long term, but this wouldn't be a knife that you would do something like this long term, but you absolutely make, you know, a bunch of cuts comfortably. Trying to see how this tip does. Oh yeah, tip's good. It's a solid tip. So it's just pokey enough to where you can get great utility cuts, um, you know, with precision, yet tough enough to where it's not gonna, it's not gonna break through, you know, light hard use. Okay, I've done quite a bit of cutting with it and I want to see how good I can strop it back. So yeah, it's it's cutting, but it's not it's not super clean. So let me um, hit it up on a strop. So we have a nine micron stroppy stuff, diamond emulsion. And if this doesn't work, we will hone it back. I think it's gonna though. You can see the steel particles coming off. All right, let's see. It's definitely a lot better. It could get even better. Let's use the ceramic honing rod really quick. And we're gonna do just a couple passes per side, basically adding a very tiny, tiny micro bevel to this. I can always do a full sharpening later. Right now, I'm just trying to see how the edge maintenance goes on this steel. Well heat treated magnet cut does very well. So it's um, it hones and shops back really good. As long as it's heat treated well, you know, at a good HRC, that does happen. Bang, look at that. There we go, now we're talking. Look at that. This paper's so fragile. As you can see, you can barely even make out that I did anything. Like the micro bevel's so tiny, you can barely even see it. The edge bevel still looks nice. You know, the scratch pattern is going from the top of the bevel down to the apex. This is a belt sharpened edge and you can tell because the scratches are running straight up and down. If I resharpen it, they'd be going at an angle. Uh, but this is, you know, a good quality belt sharpened edge. And you can see that very light glow on the apex. That's the, the micro bevel I did. So it is very subtle, very small. And you know, you're, uh, not even gonna notice it by looking at it really. 
it's just going to help bring back that bite and bring back that edge for a short amount of time until you know you're ready to sharpen so as far as the clip goes the clip works great in and out of the pocket super smooth just like hogue always does great clip it's nice and deep um it is a long clip <laughs> so it does have you know um it's a big clip but it's fine i mean it works good it doesn't really bother me too much in the hand yeah i can feel this ramp a little bit if i really wanted to i could bend it down a little bit but it doesn't bother me that bad it's not reversible though um which is kind of understandable because i'm not sure it might not be that easy to, to, you know, engage this knife considering the way it does open up. Um, it is solid side to side, but I do have a little tiny smidgen of up and down. It hasn't gotten worse. It hasn't gotten better. So, you know, I don't really have an issue with it. Um, a lot of automatic knives do have that little tiny bit, uh, but you know, depending on the type of automatic it is, sometimes after you start using it, it actually gets better, which we're going to talk about over here in just one second with the minnow. But all in all, I'm liking this one. I'm, I'm actually very impressed. I was not expecting to like it as much as I do, you know, and the next one we're going to check out. They did a really good job, but I do have some negatives. So one negative is the termination of the plunge grind and just the beginning of the edge. One, it's not, you can see it right there. They weren't able to, to hold that bevel perfect all the way back to the heel because of the plunge grind hitting right here. You can see the plunge grind starts here and it ends at the edge, which makes us poke down just a little bit farther, making it a little bit more difficult for them to hit on the belt. Now, when I resharpen it uh, myself, it's going to have a similar problem. It's going to be difficult for me to hit the apex right there. That's why I always encourage good plunge grinds and good sharpening tools, meaning separate the edge from the end of the plunge grind. This is a coated blade. So also you can see it right there. It's already, the coating is already starting to come off right there. After I sharpen that, it's absolutely going to sharpen into there. So that just, you know, it tends to look cleaner and, you know, it tends to look cleaner, look better when you have a, the edge separated from the edge of the plunge grind, giving yourself a gap. Um, then also, it's going to help you with sharpening. It's going to keep, you know, because when you're sharpening, you want to be able to go all the way past with this edge so that you can cleanly get it without hitting anything. So it makes just ease of sharpening, ease of everything um, when a plunge grind choil is done well. So that would be one negative. The next negative, you know, I already kind of said it. There's a little tiny bit of up and down. I'm not going to say it's really that big of a deal. It's just more of an observation. I don't think it's going to get, well, it hasn't gotten worse yet. I can't speak to how it's going to get. Um, hopefully it doesn't get any worse, but I honestly don't think it will. I think it's just, you know, kind of the way it is um, in order for it to have this free snapping action. Now, as far as any other negatives, that's really it, you know. It, it's a solid knife, man. This thing hits nice and hard. Nice, strong spring. I love the sound of it when you close it. Listen to that. It, you can hear that click and the ting. I love it. So, you know, it smacks, it smacks, and I, and I like that. The, the one little thing I could nitpick about, but it hasn't really affected me too much, but the geometry. The geometry is a little bit more on the robust side. Some people are gonna appreciate that because it has a nice strong tip. You know, you're probably not gonna have to worry about if you accidentally hit a staple or something, it's probably not gonna deform the edge very much. It'll probably do pretty good. Um, Magnet cuts a nice tough steel, even at a higher HRC. So I don't, you know, uh, it's going to be subjective. If you like a little bit more robust knives because you like to pick with your tip, you know, and you like to be able to be a little bit tougher on the edge, then you'll probably like this geometry. But if you're into mega slicers that after sharpening up stay the same thinness behind the edge, then, you know, it might not be, uh, you know, something uh, for you. Or, you know, maybe you like a little bit of both like me. So anyways, let's check out the next one. Next is the CRKT Minnow, which also comes in Magna Cut and is also made by Hogue. Love to see that. And I gotta say, I am very impressed with this little guy. I was expecting, honestly, I was 100% expecting not to like it. I was prepared not to bash it, but to not like it basically, you know? And after using it and carrying it and cutting with it, 
it, dude, this thing is awesome. <laughs> it really is. It's just surprising because you don't expect a little knife to be so, so locked in and so good. Anyway, so we have the Magna Cut Steel 62 to 64 HRC. Again, beautiful stone wash. And this one has a lighter spring, but that's kind of good and intentional because it's very easy to close one-handed. So it does smack out there pretty good, but it's not a hard smack. So it's a reliable smack, but not strong. Which, like I said, it, it's still very satisfying. It still works really well. You can feel it's reliable, but it makes it very easy for you to disengage. Like super easy, which I do appreciate because it's so compact. You don't want to be fighting the spring and then it fly out of your hand or something. This makes it to where you'll never have to worry about that. It's very easy to disengage one-handed. I absolutely love this micarta. This is some of my favorite micarta. This is green, I believe linen micarta, but just this style of micarta, I really, really like. You know, it has already patinaed, so it was much lighter when I got it, but just through, you know, the, the bit of handling and the bit of use and carry, it has uh, turned really a real nice green, but the lighter colors is what it originally was. But yeah, you can really see that earthy green coming out. Now, one thing I'm confused by is everywhere I look, they say this is a stainless steel bolster. Stainless steel bolster and liners, but if you look here, this is a stainless steel blade. You can see it's magnetic. The bolsters are not magnetic. The, the hardware is, but not the bolsters. The liner, not magnetic. The clip, magnetic. So I'm a little bit confused by that. I don't know if it's actually aluminum and they just accidentally called it stainless steel or if it's a non-magnetic stainless steel, which does exist. That does exist. So I'm guessing that's what it is. Uh, but, you know, it acts like aluminum. <laughs> but anyways, um, I do like the look of the micarta with the bolster. And if you really look at the bolster, it has these micro machining lines. You can hardly feel them, but they are there. Very subtle. The pivot looks really cool. The button barely pops out. It is inset, so you do have to intentionally push it. You're really not going to mi misfire it by, by touching it. Like, I can squeeze it all I want. It's never going to push the button until I intentionally do it because you have to kind of push your finger into the hole right here. You got to intentionally push it for it to fire. The sheep's foot blade, we're, let's talk about this thing cutting because this is where I started falling in love with it. This thing's actually pretty slicey. I was not expecting this thing to cut this good. The cardboard's so thick compared to the blade. Look at that. Wow, that thing's nice and slicey. And that was um, crosshatch too. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm surprised. I was not expecting this thing to cut as good as it does um, because it is such a short handle, but you can get a really nice three finger compact grip and your pinky kind of presses it in there. So this is like locked in. So like I can do very forceful cuts with this little blade, like, I'll, like very good, like surprisingly really good. Um, and then obviously because of the way this is designed, the pinch grips like to open things up, you know, do utility cuts. That's amazing, you know, so. This thing's actually surprised me. Um, this thing actually just shot up in how much I like it. <laughs> Holy cow. Now this, I don't expect it to do very well because you know, it's a, a sheep's foot Warncliffe style blade, but it did it. You just kind of go down and forward, forward and then back. Wow, this is so slicey, man. Holy cow. And then to like cut straps, like if you're gonna have to cut a rope this way. Very easy, man. This thing is very slicey. Geometry cuts, ladies and gentlemen, geometry cuts. As far as the clip goes, the clip, while it works really well, they did one fatal mistake and we might as well just go into the negatives. Um, look at the screws, the screws, stop it from from being able to go all the way deep in the pocket now however with regular jeans 
it does. So like my, the jeans I'm wearing when I, I filmed, you know, this going in and out of the pocket is called the perfect jean. And basically it has very thick pockets. However, the, the fifth pocket is like regular jeans. You know, it's the same thickness as, you know, most of my other jeans that are not from this company. So, and it slides in perfectly with that one all the way in. But with my thicker jeans, it will not go past those screws. So that is a downfall to me. I do not know why they didn't inset this and put flat, because it's not reversible. So why not just inset the clip and put flat screws? That would be so much better. You know, and it's kind of weird that the clip goes over the pivot right here. You know, it just looks odd that it's all the way that far. It'd have been cool if they ended it like right here. Not that big of a deal, you know, and it's not gonna really bother you. I honestly don't even barely feel the clip and you think you would but it is low profile enough that you you don't so not that big of a deal not a deal breaker but it's definitely something that you know i, I feel like is a huge miss that they easily could have taken care of um, the next negative is again the plunge grind um, you can see the edge is coming out farther than the rest of the edge which is because the plunge grind hits the edge once again. So when I sharpen it, it will create a smile, first of all, and this will get more pronounced because it's thicker steel right here. So granted, the entire edge is nice and slicey. This is a little utility cutter. In this case, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I prefer this to to be a little bit bigger where the edge is separated from the end of the plunge grind. So you have life to sharpen off of the knife before you ever hit the plunge grind. That's how knives should be. Folding knives should give you the ability to sharpen away steel before you ever hit the plunge grind. Because there's lots of little issues that come with hitting the plunge grind. Oh, or, or don't do a tapering plunge grind. Just knock it straight down. Go from the thickness of the blade straight down to the grind. Then you can just sharpen all the way up to the plunge grind without going over the plunge grind. Anyways, um, I really don't have very many negatives. This is very well done. And the lockup is rock solid, even though it did come with a little bit of play. But because it's a plunge lock, as I was using it, you know, the pressure was pushing the blade and it allowed the plunge to break in stronger. So now it's a damn vault. Like I was super surprised because like I said, it had a little bit of play from the start, but once I started cutting with it, now this thing, it's like a little vault. I love it. So that, I'm happy to see that because that means the lock face geometry, at least in this one's case, is good. You know, the lock is made to engage stronger and stronger as time goes on. The more you open it, the more you cut with it, rather than cutting with it and the, the blade uh, play getting worse, right? Instead of that, it got better, which is always a good sign. Anyways, like I said, this is an awesome little knife. It's small, it's compact, it's more of a fifth pocket knife, but it packs a punch, and I don't mean by the spring. It is a little slicey guy, very easy to pinch a grip, you know, just to open it up, open things up. You know, being magnet cut steel, it's gonna hold an edge for a long time. Um, I, I have done cut tests on Hogue's Magna Cut. Now, when I did the original uh, first cut test on Hogue's Magna Cut, it was earlier when they were running it a little bit softer and it still did okay, right? It didn't do great. It didn't do great like compared to some of the other cut tests, but it did good. But now that they're running it a little bit harder, I, I've noticed an increase in edge retention. So I have no doubt that this thing's not gonna hold an edge for a very, very long time. In a one inch section from my cut tests, I'm getting you know anywhere between like 600 and 800 feet you know of cardboard in a one inch section with magnet cut so that's a lot of cutting like that's a whole lot of cutting and that's without stropping or anything so if you're stropping and honing and stuff man you can keep you can keep magnet cut going for a long long time anyways there you guys go work hard stay tough until next time peace